the best tool ever devised for understanding how the world works. Science is a very human form of knowledge. We are always at the brink of the known. Science is a collaborative enterprise spanning the generations. We remember those who prepared the way, seeing through them also. If you're scientifically literate, the world looks very different to you. And that understanding empowers you. Calabash community will this week visit the National School Science and Technology Fair, which was held for the first time outdoors. The venue, the Derek Walcott Square. There, our future scientists got an opportunity to show some of the many solutions to our everyday challenges. Today, we will engage those students as they showcase their ingenuity. And what was interesting this year is that the infant schools got an opportunity to demonstrate their grasp of scientific principles. On Calabash Community, you will get to discover for yourself some of the imaginative solutions for issues such as food security, energy, environmental protection, and how we can reduce our import bill by making our very own environmentally friendly mouthwash and lip gloss. Tonight, we allow these young scientists to explain their science projects and their relevance. The theme of the science fair was young minds working together to meet global needs through science and technology. We begin in the south with the Viewfort Comprehensive Secondary School E-Level Department. I am Kasti Rudui, a student of the Viewfort Comprehensive Secondary School E-Level Department. Our project today is based on algorithmic randomness and memory. Algorithmic dealing with numerical sequences and randomness have to do really means like no link, no flow between the numerical sequences which will be given. Alright, so our problem was to determine whether or not there is a correlation between the randomness of a numerical sequence and the difficulty in remembering it. To go about doing this project we had a very simple procedure. We, we produce cards but at all um, Repeating the numbers, they were all ones, just one, two, one, three, and so on. We would give a test subject, well, you, or in any other case, 20 seconds to arrange a numerical sequence which we will be given. After 20 seconds has elapsed, the test subject has to rearrange the numerical, the numerical sequence sorry, in the original order that it was in. So how did the test subjects do? They did very well, well, with the very simple sequences, like example one to nine. Yeah, it was very simple to remember because, I mean, that's a logical sequence. Um, my name is Sean Williams. Um, I represent Semiris College and my project's called the Rubens Tube. Sean, can you give us some more details of what exactly is the Rubens, Rubens Tube experiment all about? Well, the Rubens Tube experiment is basically a experiment used to show how sound waves can affect fire. The Rubens Tube was designed in 1940 by a scientist named Heinrich Ruben. He used a four-foot pipe, he sealed the one end and he placed a speaker at the other end and he realized that sound can affect fire. Well, when he lit the, the tube, he realized that sound can affect fire. It affects it in the motion of a wave because since sound travels in a wave the fire mimics that and it travels in a wave as well it's a low frequency that outs fire so our application is to use it to out a forest fire house fire and we want to use it in the future as a security system so like if your how if there's an accidental fire the security system comes on automatically and it puts out the flame or dampen the flame My name is Niala Lewis. I am from the Soafa Lewis Community College. My partner Jamal and I, we have came up with the idea of producing biofuels from algae. The average of temperature is continuously rising and that is why we decided to come up with a green solution known as biofuels from algae. First of all, we had to extract the oils from the algae to produce our biofuel. Then we mixed our oil with two chemicals, namely sodium hydroxide and methanol, and two products were formed. 
glycerin and our biodiesel. The glycerin will not be a complete loss as it can be sold to companies that make medications for dry skin as glycerin is a major component of those medications. Our results showed that the, the amount of energy produced by our, by our biodiesel was slightly lower than that produced by regular diesel. However, the cost of production would the cost of production the cost of production is much lower than that of the production of regular diesel as when obtaining when trying to produce the normal diesel drilling is involved and the cost for the equipment for drilling is very expensive. It contributes less to global warming because algae is a plant and so it photosynthesizes and so it takes in carbon dioxide. So when you burn it, the same amount of carbon dioxide will be released into the atmosphere and so there will not be an increase in the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Next we head back to V4 Comprehensive A-Level Department. The team members are Noelita Smith, Jamie Jean Charles, Kesson Samuel and Lodia St. Helen. The reason for our project is that we wanted to create an environmentally friendly mouthwash because the commercial mouthwash which are in the stores are very harmful to the individual and the environment. So the basic ingredients we used were lemon, honey and cinnamon. We use the cinnamon because it contains an active ingredient called cinnamic aldehyde oil which is used to kill bad breath. We use the honey because it has antibacterial properties which help to fight the bacteria. We use the lemon because it is used as a whitener for the teeth and it is high in vitamin C. Well, we had 10 individuals tested for the, the experiment and five used commercial and five used the natural <laughs> mouthwash. And they were each tested at a 10 minute interval for an hour and they use their wrist as a agent to help smell their breath each time and the results were that the commercial mouthwash it left a stingy taste after taste in their mouth and it really burned the gums but the, com the homemade mouthwash was much milder for the individual and they felt it much fresh for a very longer period of time than the commercial mouthwash. My name is Kesan Samuel from V4 Comprehensive A-Level Department. Okay, Kesan, is there a possibility of this becoming a business idea? Yes, it is because it's something that is very effective and we find that it can actually help people because mouthwash is something that we can use like every day and um, having good breath is a very nice thing. <laughs> so and most of, the, most of the products are available here. We have lemons, we have honey. Well, the point of the project was to create an environmentally um, friendly product which can be used by individuals to enhance their um, daily living. So therefore, that's why we use basic ingredients, honey, lemon, cinnamon. So the farmers should be pretty happy with this project? Yes, they should. If you're scientifically literate, the world looks very different to you. And that understanding empowers you. There is a lot more to come from the National Schools Science and Technology Fair in our next segment, can we use cayenne pepper as a pesticide? We will hear from Edry Joseph of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College on this. Stay tuned to Calabash Community. Mm -hmm.